Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. In today's video, I want to reflect back on the last decade. So at the end of the year is always an exciting time for me to reflect back on the previous year, but 2019 is a fun year because we are about to leave the, the teens or the, the tens and enter the twenties, which sounds so strange. It's when I think of the twenties, I think of the 1920s. So it's going to be so strange to think of the 2020s come this next year. But in this video, I want to reflect on some makeup trends that took place between 2010 and 2019. We're going to talk about the best and worst trends of the last decade, and I'm so excited about this video. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So like usual, I did film this look. I'm wearing the Naked Cherry palette plus a single shadow. I filmed this for Instagram. It may or may not be up already. And actually, I did film my base makeup also. I'm testing out the new Urban Decay Stay Naked Powder Foundation. So that video is already up, but I have a mix of best and worst. I have four best and four worst. Where do I want to start? Maybe we'll go back and forth. All right, let's start with the worst one, which I think is definitely one of the worst on this list, and I am so guilty of this, and I would say a lot of us are, and that was the concealer that is way, 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 way too light. And this trend definitely started from Kim Kardashian and Makeup by Mario. This is a technique that they used pretty often, and it was interesting. I don't remember where I heard her say this. If it was in some sort of recent interview, Kim Kardashian said that was like one of her biggest regrets was wearing such bright under eye concealer. Now I do think that a slight variation between your foundation shade and the concealer shade can give a nice effect and kind of help sculpt the face without having to contour with darker shades. But I think a lot of us, myself included, just took this way too far. Like it gets to a point where if it's too light, it almost for me, it kind of accentuates any darkness and shadows on the under eyes. I feel like having a concealer that's similar to the color of the foundation, if not a shade lighter, is a really good zone to kind of conceal and do what it's supposed to do. But when we're going really light, sometimes I think that makes under eye circles look even more apparent. It definitely emphasizes texture. It just looks like a lot of makeup. And I think we've moved away from that trend into a more flattering version of it where we're just using concealer that's like a little bit lighter giving a slight sculpt to the skin but not going overboard like we were all right but let's flip that and talk about what i think is one of the best trends that we did in the last decade and that's warm eyeshadows now with this and with a lot of the trends in this video i'm not saying that this exclusively started between 2010 and 2019 and it was never done in any other decade or time period because it was, that's just the way trends work. They come and go. We emulate trends from decades ago. Things come back in style, they go out of style. So you will see a lot of reflections of maybe 60s, 70s, 90s in this list. But for me, one trend that really stands out from the last decade is that huge influx in warm tones. Now I do feel like we went through a phase, definitely the early 2000s and early 2010s we kind of were in more of that cool tone silvery trend. And now we're kind of moving back towards cool tones, which I also love, nothing against that. But I think for a while there, having those really beautiful, rich, warm tone browns was such a pretty and defining trend of the last decade. And I think a lot of it really was in the later half of the decade, very much inspired by the Morphe 35O and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. And I'm not just talking like warm tones, like really rich reds and burgundies. I'm talking even just browns that pull slightly more warm, kind of like these tones of brown that have a little bit more orange to their undertone, or even like the new Naked Honey that has a little more yellow to the undertone. Just browns that have warmth or warmer colors. Not only did I think was fun and defining for the decade, but I also think that they really helped with blending out eyeshadow. I am such a firm believer that warm tones are easier to work with on the eyes than cool tones. Now, of course, your undertone and a lot of different factors will come into play when you're blending eyeshadow out, but typically if you're working with something gray or gray based, it's a little bit trickier to make it seamless versus a warm brown will basically blend itself. And I feel like that really lended to some spectacular eyeshadow looks in the last decade. The next worst trend of the last decade was overlining the lips. 
I think we can all kind of tie this one back to Kylie Jenner. And it was funny because for so long there, she was saying, you know, I'm not getting lip filler. This is just makeup and overlining my lips. And I know we all knew deep down, like, mm, it doesn't really seem right. But we were all like, okay, well, maybe I'll try overlining my lips. We'll see what'll happen. And I was definitely guilty of this. I went through a phase where I was like really overlining my lips. And people in my life would come in and be like, mm, that doesn't really look the best. But I was like, no, it does. <laughs> and I thought that my own natural lips just didn't look good. I loved the look of overlined lips. And I definitely think that this was a worst, one of the worst trends of the last decade. And I'm glad that we've kind of gotten away from it. Personally, I like the size of my lips. They're not gigantic. My lower lip's bigger than my top lip like a lot of people. My top lip is on the thinner side but i have a really defined cupid's bow so i think it kind of makes it seem larger people leave me comments your lips are too small i don't really care i like my lips and i'm glad that we're kind of starting to embrace that as we move into the 20s still so weird to say but i like that we're kind of moving back more towards natural lip shapes and they're not necessarily really overdrawn or really altered the shapes of them <laughs> What I mean by that is when we had that big overlined lip trend, it was like you wanted them to be as round as possible. Like you were really exaggerating them over the top. Everything was very lip liner focused, even kind of doing that contouring trick of doing a darker lip liner with a lighter lipstick. And don't get me wrong, I do still really like that look. I think there's a time and place where it's super cute and chic, but you can tell the trend is slowly starting to move away from that where we're getting tinted lip balms or lip stains or products that don't define the lip shape as much they just kind of give it a tint and i feel like that's the direction we're going to start moving towards all right the next best trend that happened in the last decade was that we started filling in our eyebrows now that's not to say that people didn't fill in their eyebrows before now i know i'm gonna get comments like well blah 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 but there became a really big emphasis on filling in the brows in the last decade which does also lead into one of the worst trends. We'll get to that. But a lot of us, I mean, if you look back 2008, 2007, who was filling in their eyebrows? Not very many people. And if they were, they were filling them in still very thin. We were kind of getting away from that like 90s, like really tiny brow, even like early 2000s. That was so trendy to pluck your eyebrows down to nothing, the thinnest line possible. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I look back on like 90s, early 2000s looks and I'm like, kind of like that look but i do also appreciate that over the last 10 years we've kind of returned back to a little bit of a structured brow you know there was a time there was a little too structured and like i said we're going to get into that but having defined eyebrows really helps to shape the face a lot of times if you aren't filling in the brows or you're wearing them a little bit softer some of your facial features can kind of disappear this kind of ties everything together just the eyebrows but the worst trend that i'm referring to i think we all know is the instagram brow we took it a little too far it was like we started filling in the eyebrows and then we went crazy with the eyebrows and it was the most bold eyebrows possible the most sharp eyebrows possible the most sculpted like you didn't want it to look like you had natural hairs there you wanted it to look like this was drawn on but i'm glad we've kind of moved away from that i feel like these days we're into the feathery brow the more natural brow just kind of emphasizing your own brow shape your own brow color not necessarily making it overly structured kind of just working with what you've got but a more natural but still structured brow is kind of the direction we're in right now and i love it okay my last worst trend of the decade i'm a little nervous to talk about this so i've been saving it for the end because i feel like people have strong opinions on this and i know i'm gonna get a lot of people that disagree i feel like with the first three worst trends you guys are i think a lot of people are with me i hear that in my comments often but this last one i know a lot of people really like so it's just my own opinion if you love this keep rocking it but the worst of the decade eyelash extensions now you could maybe tie in fake eyelashes with this but fake eyelashes i don't mind them but what i think has gone a little too far is the lash extensions now i do think it's toned down in the past year or two there was a time there when it was like it was so common to see eyelash extensions and sometimes they're done really well that's the problem i don't want to generalize and say they all look terrible because they definitely don't some salons will do a fantastic job they look natural but sometimes you will see someone from like 20 feet away and you're like she's wearing lash extensions and for me it's such a jarring difference when you see someone with no makeup on 
and then super long, super thick black eyelashes, like super dark black too. And I just, I'm not about it. I don't like the look of lash extensions most of the time. Sometimes they're done well, but a lot of times it's like, whoa. It's just so intense, but not in a good way. Let me know down below. Do you love lash extensions? Are you like, Kelly, I look fabulous in my lash extensions. What are you talking about? Because some people do, but I think that that trend, there was a point there where it was a, it was a bit much for me. And the last trend of the decade that I loved was glowy skin. And the irony is that I'm pretty matte today, but like I said, I'm doing a foundation wear test right now. But I feel like we've gotten back to skin like skin. There was a time there, kind of maybe in the middle of the decade, when it was matte in a lot of areas, but like extra glowy on the highlighted parts of the skin with really intense highlighters. I didn't mind that trend, but now I feel like we've gotten into skin that looks like natural, beautiful, glowy skin. People like to wear a little bit of highlight. People like a more satin or natural or dewy finish for foundation, and I really appreciate that. I do still love the look of a matte face. Don't get me wrong. I wear it often. I think it looks best on camera when I'm filming, but I do love that we've gotten into this kind of radiant, glowy, really youthful, bright skin. But that's gonna complete this video. Let me know down below what you thought were the best or worst trends of the decade. I'd also love to know if there was anything I put in best or worst that you would have flipped. If you're like, no, glowy cheeks were the worst of the decade, let me know down below. I'm really interested to hear from you guys. Hope you're enjoying Vlogmas so far and I'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. Bye.